nice and water in our retirement. What were you planning on telling me? Not again. If you are going to fritter away the pension pot, then at least hold on to the life insurance. Honestly, Greg, did you think you were going to live forever? <sighs> did that really happen? Too much wine. But that's no excuse. Well, I night. Good to know I've still got it. Morning. Morning. Want first dibs on the shower? No. You go. Hmm. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Maybe it was doomed from the start. Our relationships are messy. They don't work to a prearranged schedule. They need time to evolve organically. But you can't impose rules and restrictions on the human heart. Perhaps it was a tactical error. Or can you? The most successful relationships seem to rely on rules and boundaries. Let's face it. The alternative makes life very complicated. On the other hand, a skirmish of this kind was all but inevitable. The 40-day date made us feel closer, more intimate. <laughs> Left to our own devices, we wouldn't be where we are now. Which is where, exactly? So much for emotional maturity. We both behaved like dippy teenagers feel like a teenager again. Still, I must admit, the sex was great. The sex was top notch. No. The sex was great. Oh, I might have known. For a moment there, I thought a miracle had occurred and you'd gone to get yourself a job. Takes the edge off. Edge? What edge? If you had any less edge, you'd evaporate. <sighs> Whatever would your father say? I can hear him. Turning in his grave. Turning in his gnome, you mean? I haven't got time for your pedantry. The estate agent just rang. Someone's coming round in a bit. So get rid of all of that and fumigate. Nothing deters a potential buyer like the stench of illegal drugs. I want this place spotless. Or no more allowance. Oh, someone's the early bird. I missed our breakfast chat. Yes, well, um, there's been a bit of a development uh, last night. Oh, mm, pray tell. Later. <laughs> you did not say that. I didn't want to be invited back. <laughs> Can I help you? Oh, you just seem happy. Yeah, we're, um, we're fine. Thanks for asking. Oh, I'm glad you finally sorted out your differences. Just a shame about the collateral damage. <laughs> As you can see, the rooms are very adaptable. Mm -hmm. And there is scope for a conservatory. <gasps> Also, we have planning permission for a sizable extension. <laughs> uh, anyway, the utility room's through there. All of the fixtures and fittings are inclusive in the asking price. Brilliant. The curtains, too. Beautiful. So, are you ready for the garden? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh. You're a creative gardener, I can see. Oh, I can't take much credit for that. Mm -hmm. My husband was the one with the green fingers. He died a couple of months ago. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Is it, um, south-facing? More or less. Oh, well, <laughs> that's one fixture we won't be leaving behind. Oh. Oh. <sighs> Sentimental, is it? You could say that, yes. It belonged to Greg. He once joked that he'd like his ashes kept inside it. That way, he could keep a watchful eye over his beloved garden, even after death. I see. So he got his wish. Yes. For now, anyway. I'm not sure where to scatter him. He only mentioned it the once. Neither of us imagined he'd drop dead of a heart attack at 56. <clears throat> and with no insurance! Oh. Oh. So, now we have to downsize. Mm. Greg won't have much of a garden to watch over. A small patio, maybe. <sighs> Do you have a family? Me? No, no. I got divorced last year. Oh. I would have liked to have had kids, but things just, just didn't turn out that way. You must have a look at the shed. Mm. Or the chalet, oh. as I prefer to call it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. It's lovely. Is Thank it? you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. What a lovely lady. She seemed really keen. She said she might be in touch soon via the agent. You know, she's a divorcee. I'd have thought this house would be too big for a single person. I didn't say that, obviously. Time waster. What? She's a time waster. Fancy to snoop, that's all. What makes you say that? Just a hunch. Oh. I hope you didn't linger in the house too long. You still reek of wacky backy. Oh, that pong might easily have put her off. <laughs> yeah, right. Now have a shower, can't you? Before we have any more visitors. Well, I'm off to the shops. I need more air for sure. before you go away for the weekend, Drew. I know. Shame on you, Dr. Reed. The thing is, though, that last night gave us a chance to open up. And, well, after we shed all the emotional baggage, shedding our clothes didn't seem that difficult. Hey, you don't want to justify yourself to me? <laughs> I think I'm trying to justify it to myself. I mean, neither of us meant to break the rules. And, oh, now reality's setting in, and oh, along with my hangover. Right, well, you know what I would say? Take two aspirin and blame it on the boogie. Or alcohol. Or something. <laughs> what have you done with your father? Say what? The gnome! What have you done with him? Nothing. Well, where is he then? Where he always is. On his little patch, chilling. Not anymore. You probably can't even remember in your drug addled state. Oh. What? Not me, Mum. Someone else must have taken him. Like who? Kids, maybe. <sighs> it's not worth anything. Only to us. Why would anyone steal it? Practical joke. Maybe they just like nicking stuff. Who knows how the criminal mind works. Leave it with me. I'll make a few inquiries. Just as soon as I've cleared my head. Oh, forget it. This is a matter for the police. The police? Wait! Have you spoken to Howard? No. Nope. Well, apparently last night's date went a little bit too well and there was a proverbial nightcap at his place. Wow. So, two people who are dating spent the night together. 
We'd better hold the front page. Yeah, just tell Harry to say a few Hail Marys and get straight back onto the plan. Yeah, or they could just abandon the plan in its entirety. Just enjoy that atmosphere of mutual bewilderment that accompanies any new relationship. Because oh, that works so well for us. You just don't get it. If they want this to work for them... Never mind. I'm sure Harold will fill you in on all the gory details. Lucky me. He has a white beard, big and bushy, and a red pointy hat. It's a cheerful little thing. OK. Height? Not very tall, about 12 inches or so. 12 inches? About that, yes. Mrs Winters, I was under the impression that your husband had gone missing. No. Well, yes, in a way. It is ashes that have gone AWOL. They were stored inside a garden gnome out the back and somebody's pinched it. Right, I see. That sort of changes things. Well, I'm sorry if I didn't make myself very clear on the phone, but it was a huge shock. Can you think of any reason why anybody would want to steal the gnome or your husband's ashes, for that matter? No, not at all. My son thinks it might be kids knocking about. It's possible, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I will log this and you will receive a crime number in due course. You will investigate this properly, won't you? Yes, but I, I'll be honest with you, Mrs Winters, it won't be our biggest priority. I'm not bothered about the gnome. It's my husband's remains that I care about. I need them back. I understand. And I will knock on a few doors. And we'll see if any of your neighbours can shed any light on it. Hi. This is Luke, my son. Uh, just off out, Mum. Later, yeah. OK. Well, you can contact me on this number if the gnome shows up or there's anything else to go on. So, uh, anything you need to talk about, you know, work-related? No. Nope. All right. Well, it's just, uh, just catch up, really. Everything's fine. Mm. So, I'd, uh... Listen, before you go, there's, um and some uh, interesting developments, you know, vis-a-vis. -vis. You and Emma. Yeah, last night, um, you know, had a lovely meal, and uh, afterwards... You know, I'd, I'd rather not know the details, Howard. Well, it was very enjoyable, yeah. You know, at the same time, regrettable, you know, just as I was starting to respect the rules. Did you have a successful evening, yes or no? Successful. It was better than that. Fantastic. So how's about you ditch this whole dating malarkey and just go for it? Good chat. Good chat. Joking me. <sighs> nice meal. Hmm? Yesterday. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Very delicious. Thank you. Jimmy. So Zara, thank you for calling this ad hoc meeting. What are your concerns? Sit. Oh yeah? On reflection, I may have been a little harsh on him once or twice. Being an effective mentor requires a certain level of toughness, as I'm sure you'll agree. But nevertheless, I may have overstepped the mark. So there it is. Mayor Culper, let's move on. Well done, Zara, for recognising one's faults. Never mind admitting to them. It's never easy. Well, at least you're over the first hurdle. The first hurdle? This isn't a steeplechase. Well, all you have to do now is apologise. 
Well, I, I just have, haven't I? To Sid. And hope that he accepts it. And what makes you believe it was stolen by the occupier of this house? Well, for one thing, I saw her in the back garden pegging it. Why didn't you tell your mum that? Is there a problem? Is this the suspected gnome thief? Can I be of assistance? You can, please. This gentleman seems to think that you stole a gnome from his back garden that also just happened to have his father's ashes in. <laughs> why would I do such a thing? You know why. Do I? Do you? No. You want Dad's ashes. What? Well, I guess you feel like you're entitled to them. She was his bit on the side. Oh. Mum never found out and I never told her. <laughs> this is madness. I've no idea what he's talking about. All I know is that he stinks to high heaven of cannabis. Maybe he's in the middle of some druggy hallucination. Yes, I did notice the faint whiff myself. That's... No, that's totally not the issue here. If you'd like to search my house, then please be my guest. Go on. I don't think that's going to be necessary. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. She's bluffing you, man. You've just been totally bluffed. If I was you, I would let it go. That is, of course, unless you want to discuss your recreational habits down at the station. No. Come in. Hi. So, are you, um, up to speed, diary-wise? Yes, you? Oh, yes. Well, sir, I was very pleased to read your last comment. Seems like we're on the same page. Oh, you mean about the sex? Yes. Well, it shouldn't have happened. Not yet. Yes, well, you know, no, but it has happened. Why don't we just ditch the rules? You make a go of it. Give it to me. Oh. What? Hand it over now and I'll let you off. Oh, go away, Luke. You've caused a lot of upset for Mum. I thought she didn't know. She doesn't. Well, then what she doesn't know won't hurt her. Nicking Dad's ashes won't bring him back. They belong to us. Look, I know this can't be easy for you to accept, but I wasn't just your dad's bit on the side. I was devoted to him and him to me. We were making plans to be together permanently. It was only a matter of time. So you siphoned off his savings, then on to the next mug. Greg was looking forward to introducing us properly. He said you were a chip off the old block. Dead proud he was. Sticking him in a tacky gnome. We'd want to be scattered in our favourite place. Wait! Stop! There's something I need to explain! Oh! Mum! Mum! Get in the car, quick. I need a lift. I'll explain on the way. On the way? Where? Spring Vale Woods. The gnome's been taken there. Gotta move fast! Who's taken it? Just grab the keys. Hurry up! Yeah, I'm gonna call the police. No, 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 we haven't got time for that this time, man, Mum. Oh, all right. You go and wait in the car. I'll just go and change my shoes. Now, the rules are all well and good, up to a point, but I feel that we've outgrown them. Now, the 40-day date was set up to get couples like us to the point that we're at now. Sex? No, understanding one another. I think we've got a little way to go there, don't you? Yes, well, in light of what happened last night, you know, following all these rules and regulations, it, it just seems to me academic. But the rules are to set you free. Isn't that what we agreed? Yes, but... So let's respect them. Come on, it's a small price to pay. We'll just pretend that last night was, um, well, a very pleasant dream. 
Really? Yeah, no more sex until the weekend away, and only then if we feel comfortable. Okay. That's what you were a stickler for rules. Yeah, well, full of surprises, me. It's going to happen again. We both know it. So why don't you just um, savor the anticipation? Please, stop! You're very persistent. I'll give you that. Mum, I told you to wait in the car. Why would you say that? What possessed you? This is harassment. Please, just leave me alone. Well, would somebody kindly tell me what's going on? My guess is she's some kind of crazed gnome pilferer. It's a weird condition. I've read about it in magazines. I'm sorry for your loss, but it's my loss too. Greg and I, we were lovers. What? I'm sorry. She's lying, isn't she? Sorry, Mum. It's true. How long was this going on? Three years and five months. When I was still with my husband. We came here every Sunday. Oh, I was at church. You knew. He told you. No. I used to come here with my ex. It was our favourite place to get stoned. Until I discovered it was also Dad's favourite place to get. Greg would want to be here. So many happy times. No, don't. This is marijuana. Is it now? Oh, great. Why'd you have to go and invite him? If I'd have known I was coming on a drugs bus, I would have called for backup. Does this belong to you? No, I just found it in here. You found it? You stole it? So your statement, that was false, was it? Theft, deception, possession. I'm having a field day. I think you three need to come down the station. You're arresting us. Only if I have to. Yet the weed belongs to me. No kidding. Personal use only. Quite a lot of personal use. You don't need to involve them. I'll take the rap. So this is where you've been hiding. <sighs> Look, if you feel that I've been too tough on you, I understand. And I'm sorry. OK? OK. Good. OK, that wasn't a good enough apology. I know that I've been too tough on you. And when you said that I had some issues, you were right. And I let them affect my work. And for that, I am genuinely, deeply sorry. OK. Well, that's something. Wow. Who'd have thought Zara would apologise to anyone, let alone you? I'll take that as a compliment. She must have been really horrible. Yeah. Yeah, she was. It can't have been easy for you, knowing what you knew. I'm not surprised you wanted to zone out. Dad let you down. And me. He wasn't the person I thought he was. <sighs> what did you do with his ashes? Put them in the trash. It's okay. I don't collect them till tomorrow. <laughs> Bye, Dad. Good riddance. What are you so smug about?
Just when I thought common sense had prevailed, we plunge back into this nonsense. It's a good thing. Personally, I feel quite privileged. Privileged? Hmm. Observing Howard and Emma's courtship from the sidelines, it's been fascinating. I've gotten a lot out of it. It's funny. I never had you pegged as a voyeur. I mean, it's taught me a few things. Things that I intend to apply to my next relationship. Oh, really? You've got someone in mind, have you? No. No. I am here to make a formal complaint. Zara, take a seat. Heston has accused me of being racist, and I won't stand for it. Where's the doctor? Not here, I'm afraid. Maybe I can help? It has to be a doctor. Suit yourself. Did you say shoes? In your shoes doesn't actually mean that you swap footwear. Oh, well, that's a relief. After Max's arrest, accusations are flying as the investigation